President Obama's big tax-related move since he has been president was to cut taxes for 95% of all Americans, everyone making less than a quarter million dollars a year. But forget that, because I read on the internet and saw on the cable that President Obama is the taxingest taxing taxer in all the taxing history of taxes. In fact, he invented taxation because he's a taxing taxidermist who drives a taxi. He even vacations in Texas. And so, conservatives will gather across the country the day that taxes are due this week to protest President Obama and taxes, even though he cut taxes. They are calling the protests tea parties, as you may have heard. Uh, they have been warming up to the idea by mailing tea bags to Washington. They're going to try and send tea bags to D.C. D.C. Uh, tea bag the White House. Tea bag the fools in D.C. Tea bag the fools in D.C. Yeah. Because it remains unclear what they are really protesting, and because it's clear that they don't know why they shouldn't refer to it as teabagging, the outstanding question about this April 15th day of amorphous outrage is whether it is a genuine grassroots movement. Some folks have noted that corporate lobbyists and Rupert Murdoch's media empire have a lot to do with organizing and promoting these protests. Among them, New York Times columnist and Nobel Prize winner Paul Krugman, who writes, quote, the Tea Parties don't represent a spontaneous outpouring of public sentiment. They're astroturf, fake grassroots events manufactured by the usual suspects. In particular, a key role is being played by Freedom Works, an organization run by Richard Armey, the former House Majority Leader, and supported by the usual group of right-wing billionaires. And the parties are, of course, being promoted heavily by Fox News. Interestingly, the actual folks turning up for these events thus far seem kind of Ron Paulish. Folks at protests arguing against the legitimacy of the Federal Reserve, folks arguing for a return to the gold standard, I feel like I'm back outside the Republican primary debates with the exuberant Ron Paul supporters showing up all the other Republican candidates. Remember how the Ron Paul campaign raised $6 million in one day in a drive that coincided with the anniversary of the Boston Tea Party? Ron Paul supporters never called that fundraiser a teabagging perhaps because they knew how to use UrbanDictionary.com. But as the country tries to figure out if the teabaggings this week are the place to look for the future of the Republican Party, is it also possible that the Ron Paul revolution of 2008 was also a window on that future? Joining us now is Air America's national correspondent and Daily Beast contributor, Anna Marie Cox. Anna Marie, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Rachel. Is there some Ron Paul revolution in the teabagging, do you think? Well, there is a lot of love in teabagging, you have to say that, and that's, that was my favorite thing about the Ron Paul Revolution, it had love in it, um, literally in the logo. Uh, you know, it's funny, they, they, they really did come up with the concept of the Tea Party. Uh, in 2007, actually, is when they started referring to some of their events as tea parties. It is curious, though, as you point out, they do not use the verb tea bag. Uh, it might be because they're less enthusiastic about teabagging than some of the more corporate conservatives who seem to have taken to it quite easily. They also seemed like they had a habit of being good on the online machine. They said it was a lot of sort of very savvy web organizing, so maybe it occurred to them to Google the phrase. Perhaps. And also, you know, I was looking around on some of the Ron Paul websites today, some of the blogs from his supporters that, that are still out there, and a few of them have, have promoted these events, these, these current teabagging events. And it's funny, if you read the comments, people mock them. Mm. Um, these ardent Ron Paul supporters uh, find this particular iteration of what had been, I think, a pretty good idea, um, that one single money bomb event that they had on the anniversary of the Boston Tea Party to raise money for Dr. Paul um, is being somewhat perverted, I might say, um, by the current teabaggers. Dr. Paul himself is going to be appearing at one of the teabagging events. He told the uh, Star-Telegram, he said, uh, these things are popping up spontaneously around the country. I, I noticed even during the presidential campaign, I know, um, that he would sort of he sort of disavowed the movement around himself, even when it was so obviously about him. So he never quite said, I don't know who these people are, but he always sort of seemed like that. Is it possible we're seeing the same dynamic? I, I think so. I'm not sure if Dr. Paul is as good on the internet as perhaps his followers are. Uh -huh. um, and he, I, I, he also may not know how to use Urban Dictionary. Um, but also, I want to point out that some of the Ron Paul people that are going to these rallies, and, and Dr. Paul himself, I think do genuinely believe in whatever wacky idea is being supported here. I mean, it's hard for to say what the idea is. As you point out, it's sort of amorphous outrage. But the Ron Paul people are very anti-tax of any kind. So there you go.
that's that's a connection justification for being there. That's all I can that's all I can say. Do you think that the Obama administration, like Robert Gibbs in the press office, will talk about and promote the teabagging folks the way they have picked on some other conservative causes and figures like Rush Limbaugh? Well, I have been waiting for Gibbs to talk about teabagging from the podium for a long time. And I'm sure there are other White House supporters who would also greatly look forward to him explicating the White House's position on teabagging. However, I don't think that's going to happen, partially because I think they also know how to use UrbanDictionary.com. I think, I, I think that's fair to say. Wow, almost can't hold it together. Thank you very much, Anna Marie Cox, Air America National Correspondent, Daily Beast contributor. Thank you very much. Look at me. Thank you, Rachel. I've never sneezed on the air, but now I have officially blushed twice. All right, coming up on Countdown with the legislative session nearly over and still no agreement on stimulus funds.